wanted to say hi to everybody that's been watching my videos and I wanted to tell you if you like my videos hit like and subscribe um, I'm outside I'm sorry if there is some sun in the background but it was too much of my too much of my eyes on the porch so I found don't mind my hair I have really bad ponytail hair that I just brushed but I want to have my hair up in a messy bun even though that's kind of what I do um and someone just texted me my sister wants help with her eyebrows maybe uh I the article that I wanted to get to today is help yourself it's on the bfrb.org help yourself a self a self-help program managing trichotillomania so it starts off as how do you help yourself when you have difficult problems such as hair pulling for almost 20 years, we have been treating hundreds of people, young and old, who struggle with trichotillomania, hair pulling disorder. But what we, but what the people who can't access their, but what about the people who can't access therapists, don't have health insurance, and can't afford treatment? What about those people who are seeing excellent therapists, but the therapists themselves have no experience treating hair pulling? And I'm all but eating my hair here. That, that really did not fix my problem. Um, <clears throat> how can we help those people? How can we help these people who want to stop pulling their hair? These are the questions that we have struggled with for many years. How can we make a good treatment accessible to all? How do you help yourself when you have a difficult problem such as hair pulling? Whoops, I'm reading the same thing over again. Over the years, we have been especially concerned about the needs of children with trick who cannot access professional care. For this reason, we wrote a self-help book that help, that is geared to the young people, but is also helpful to adults. And this book is called The Hair Pulling Habit and You. And it's based on the COMB Comprehensive Behavioral Model pioneered by Dr. Charles Manciuto. That, I probably read that wrong. I can't pronounce names. We have also adapted material from our books for self-help workshops for adults which we call self-help. This article outlines the information from those workshops. We hope that this will help assist you in your efforts to help yourself manage or recover tr from trick. Um, I, I read through the this earlier, not well apparently, if I can't read it out loud. And um, it helps a little bit. Some of the stuff I already identified, it's, it's more stopping the habit. Understand your pulling profile it helps you recognize, wow, people just aren't gonna stop texting me today. Recognize that trick is a multi-dimensional problem that usually maintains several factors. These include efforts to meet your sensory needs, responding to internal cues that stimulate behavioral behaviors and experience of feeling like your hands have a mind of their own. So sensory needs, remember science way back when. If so, then you may recall the five senses are primarily senses of touch, taste, smell, vision, and hearing. Some of these senses can be extremely important for someone with trichotillomania. In a tactile realm, for instance, your hands may need to, needed to be needed to seek or are bothered by certain sensations such as coarse, rough, bumpy, prickly. Prickly. And that bugs me. I want to pull it out or they may just seek the opposite, smooth, fine, or soft sensations. Some people, the sensation release, discomfort, and feeling of interest, feelings, feels interesting or pleasant. For others, feeling is only like a mechanism to attain the hair to play with, which may feel soothing, calming, relaxing, invigorating, stimulating, or exciting. Like, you know, like, like that. I don't do that much. Um, the mouth region, which is rich in nerve endings, may be stimulated by the sensation of biting or swallowing the hair, or having the hair touched in the skin. I don't, I like, I like and dislike the feeling of hair on my lip. Like, when I have lip gloss on, I don't like it. But other times, I don't mind it being around there, which is weird. Internal cues. The second factor involved with trick is the certain cues that can provoke trigger beha pulling behavior. These cues may be emotional, cognitive, or environmental. Emotional and psychophysiological cues can include emotions. I'm done. 
Emotions such as anger, frustration, indecision, impatience, and feeling really happy. Other internal states may lead that may lead to pulling are physiological based on and include restlessness or hunger. And these situations can help a person relax, focus, or feel energized. Cognitive cues are generally uncomfortable thoughts about imperfections. The imperfection might be about your hair or hair growth or lack thereof. Sometimes may be viewed as too thick or too curly, the wrong color, or out of place. This, um, this I, I get um, a lot of times if the hair is like feels thick or feels like it doesn't belong or like the big white hairs that I get, I want to pull those a lot. Does that make sense? Sorry, I was looking, but I thought I saw something behind me. Um, perfectionist thinking may, go, may also take place regarding one's inevitable imperfect efforts to manage trick. For instance, some people challenge themselves by saying, I'm not going to pull all day, pull today at all. Unfortunately, these things set them up for even more pulling because they just pull one hair and may think they have failed. That is true. Once I pull one hair, I start pulling more. At that point, there may not seem to be any reason to control their hair pulling for the rest of the day and increased pulling or even pulling binges can take place. That has happened to me. I did really good and then all of a sudden I just started pulling a bunch of tiny little hairs out and one led to another. Let's see. For some, pulling can also occur when perfectionist thoughts occur in areas of life. These may include imperfection around their levels of competency or self-worth or their frustration around life events. Yes, that is, that is true for me. Another kind of cue is environmental, identifying the locations where you pull activities that you are engaged in during those tempting times, such as like sitting in a certain place in your living room or in your desk or in your car, like location where you're at. That's because it's out of habit. Um, in certain places in the living room for me, I found have done that. When hands have a mind of their own, there are times when your hands may seem to have a mind of their own. This may be difficult due to the power of repetition, the strength of urges, or being in what some people describe as a trance-like state. Um, that is kind of on and off for me. That's, I, I have, I, I'm usually aware when I'm pulling. Uh, for a while there, I'd be watching like Netflix and start pulling my hair out and not realizing it. I just, I needed something else to do with my hands and then it stopped. See, my hair looks pretty curly. I'm sorry, I'm so easily distracted. I'm like squirrel. Uh, my hair gets these nice waves, but it looks terrible if you saw it as a whole because I had it in a ponytail or a bun. Recognizing the elements of your profile. The above factors can be hard to remember, so we use the acronym Fiddle Sheep. Fiddling, sensory, hands have a mind of their own, environmental, emotional, perfectionist thinking. This will help you identify the factors that are involved in maintaining pulling. Like, okay, and then they have like a little workbook thing. So I'm going to link, definitely link this down below because you can go to the link and you can print it out or write the questions in a journal and answer them. And this can really help you figure out what's going on for you. Like I tend to pull... It used to be often, now it's never to sometime, never to seldom. Fiddling when my hands need stimulation, like when does this happen? Um, fiddling and sensory because it's not calming, but I, it, it, it kind of relieves the burning on my scalp. Again. My hands have a mind of their own, not so much. Environment, when I'm doing a certain sedentary activity, I am in certain locations such as the bathroom or bedroom or, and then it gives you like a little area to answer that. For me, it's the couch, watching TV, or sometimes in my car, or sometimes it's been like when I'm at my desk journaling or doing something, I start going like this. I know this might be a triggering video. You can see my hair is trying to grow. I keep finding all these baby hairs, all these like little baby hairs right here. Um, Emotions, when I am feeling fr angry, frustrated, or have strong emotions, or when I am bored, making transition from one activity to another. Um, yeah, no, that, that's right on, the, right on the bat for me. The same with perfectionism. When I see feels 
when I see or feel that hairs are out of place. That is the first thing I remember from when I was sitting in like sixth grade English class. I felt like these hairs didn't match the rest of the hairs and I yanked it out. That is, that was probably my first trigger. Strategies to address your unique needs. Once you identify the major factors or triggers that lead to pulling, you can develop a menu of strategies. One, meet your body's needs in other ways. Two, find ways to respond to thoughts, emotions, and internal cues that trigger pulling behavior. And three, develop techniques for modifying the environment so you'll, you will not be tempted to pull. And four, find ways to block and prevent pulling. Like for instance, say you're fiddling around, uh, you can use a koosh ball, squishy ball, twine, string, knotted floss, sandpaper, a swatch of fuzzy material, a textured pipe cleaner, a textured sponge, pot scrubber, a mushroom, or vegetable brush. Oh, okay, I just thought it was like a mushroom. Oops. Uh, a nail brush, a feathered boa, a swatch of silk or soft material, a Chanel pipe cleaner. My hairdresser's name is Chanel. Um, a blanket, worry beads, or a piece of Velcro, or silly putty. For me, I use like a koosh ball usually. That works. Um, all the other ones I don't think would be quite a match for me, but you never know. There's many textured children's toys that will be interesting to play with. Craft stores and kitchen stores are a good source for textured sensory items. If you can think of sensory items that helped you, comment them and comment them below because that would be great because then you know someone else is going to come along maybe maybe a koosh ball didn't work for them but you know dry spaghetti worked for you so maybe it'll work for them but you know something that that's helping you a little bit sensory use a makeup brush on your face a textured sponge or to wash your face or brush your eyebrows a wide tooth comb to brush shampoo that tingles an ice pack on your head or a face on your head or face, splash your face with cold water, jump in the shower and wipe your hair, take a bath, chew gum, stick or stick a peppermint, chew raw spaghetti, do needlepoint, or rug hooking, eat a sunflower seed, eat sunflower seeds. Um, I do crochet sometimes when I'm really like irritated and just, I, I'll put on a YouTube video and if I don't necessarily have to watch it but wanna hear it, I'll sit there and do that and, or my Netflix or whatnot and crochet. Um, think about providing your body with different interesting sensations. Bath and beauty stores can be a good source of these types of products. Um, you can try like little loofahs or sponges and things like that. Now with hands, have a mind of their own. Use band-aids on your fingertips. That has not worked for me. Wear lightweight gloves or rubber fingertips. Um, those have not worked for me. Tape over your fingers or an ace bandage on your elbow. When it bends too much, it will be uncomfortable. Um, I've thought of those two, the ace bandage I might try, but things on my fingers actually annoy me even more. Um, use hand cream repeatedly so that your hands have, are slightly moist. Use non-instant conditioner. And it takes about half an hour to put hair up in a towel, wear a hat, wear a scarf. Uh, wearing a hat works, wearing a um, headband works, but I don't do that that often. Um, you could put Vaseline on your eyelids and moisturizers in your eyelids, wear an eye mask or a gel, like one of those gel masks that can be heated or cooled if you pull out like your eyelashes or your eyebrows. Um, I found I moisturize my fingers a lot and they're a lot less rough now that I've been doing my nails. And that helps because if I've got moisturizer on my fingers because they get extremely dry, it helps a lot with preventing me from pulling because I don't want all the lotion in my hair and my fingers don't get as dry now. Environmental change. Change where you sit, lower the lights, cover the mirror, put a reminder notes in different places, uh, put your makeup on in a different room, use a different bathroom. For me, it's just, you know, finding something to do besides sitting on my ass on the couch. Sometimes I go for walks when I was really like irritated and wanted to pull my hair. Or, um, you know, I've been working on other stuff for my planners, so I might, you know, I'm gonna keep doing that, keep my mind busy. Um, emotional, keep a journal, talk with a friend, exercise, write a letter, rehearse what you could say, take a yoga class, practice relaxation techniques, practice assertive techniques, assertiveness techniques. Um, I keep a journal and a couple of my friends 
I, I talked to you about this. Um, I don't really, you know, I could write a letter since I do journaling, but I'm kind of lazy. Um, perfectionism, tolerate imperfection. Remember that you are working on a behavior, not the hair. When your behavior is more under control, your hair will grow. Be nice to yourself, treat yourself in a friendly, compassionate, and non-judgmental manner. Allow for setbacks. Find ways to tolerate your hair growing imperfectly and see emotional factor section. Um, that's always like a really, really hard thing for most people is to tolerate the imperfection, but don't stress yourself out if you make a mistake. Don't stress yourself out with that kind of stuff. Like I almost pulled the hair out the other day and I didn't stress myself about that. And when it comes to imperfection, I don't know if you could see it. I've got all these little white hairs up here and they've been bugging the crap out of me, but I'm telling myself I need to embrace my hair. Creative and useful weekly schedule. They have like a little schedule down here where you can say what you're doing and what day of the week it is and what you're doing to have it. Like if you're watching TV in the family room, every time I watch TV, blank, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I will wear band-aids on my fingers or I will brush my hair with a white tooth comb um, or I'll, you know, band-aids on my fingers or tape for wandering hands for the other one. For sensory, uh, brushing your hair is good. I, I sometimes use a, I have a scalp massager and I use that sometimes when I'm sitting there watching TV to stimulate my scalp. Um, damn lip gloss. I will play a vel with a Velcro, something that you're fiddling with, and then it gives the space to give your own ideas. Important points to remember. Trichotillomania is neither simple nor is it just a habit. It's a multi-dimensional problem that requires multi-dimensional approach. So basically that means there's more than one thing, you know, there's mental, emotional, everything that we just went over. So it's gonna take more than one thing just to make you resist that urge to pull or whatnot. I'm getting more text messages. Uh, when using strategies to help yourself, you must use more than one kind. That is true. Use a weekly chart as a, re as a reminder and to help you organize your program. I use a planner and if you've seen my Instagram, I'm starting to branch out with that and putting little things in there about trick or not pulling and stuff. So if you are a planner girl or planner person like I am, you can and put it there but you can also like use a calendar you can there's a thousand different methods you can use a calendar you can write it down however whatever's going to work with you to make like a weekly thing keep yourself on task with this type of stuff we hope that you will find this program helpful trying to work on trick can be overwhelming frustrating and extremely difficult to do on your own if you've tried other approaches in the past you may want to switch this to this one now if you have never used a systematic approach you may want to set up the entire program at one time and you may try a few suggestions at a time and add them every few weeks. Most importantly, we know that dealing with trick is a complicated issue and for those who feel that they are ready to try this on their own, we would like you to take as much or as little, little as you are comfortable with. As, ho as hosts at a dinner party might say, please help yourself. So this is a really amazing website and they do have an Instagram and I started following them on Instagram and they started following me back. Um, I really, you know, can't stress enough these articles and I have days where I can't just sit down and read an article. I just, I want to skim over it. I'm done. So that is why I'm kind of going over these with you guys. So you can kind of, you know, hear it rather than see it. You know, not everybody is a person that likes to sit down and research and read. I also, you know, want to share some of my own experiences about this because I know that there are probably millions of people out there with the same problem and they don't know how to handle it or they feel like they're all alone. And, you know, if one person watches this and they don't know me and they don't care and they, they just have trick and they watched it and it was helpful, that's all that matters to me. Um, I am going to see if the link is still available, but there was a shirt to support the BFRB. And if I can find the link, I will put that down there, but I don't know. I, the other day when I ordered one, it said it was the last day and I was gonna post a video so you guys could have the link, but I didn't have time. 
Um, do you like my shirt today? It says, says, I support the right to arm bears. This was one of my friend's shirts that was gifted to me. Uh, that's another story. Uh, if there is more you'd like to see in my videos, let me know, comment below. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of new at this. Today is Sunday and I'm going to do some stuff for work and then work on a couple other things hobby stuff so hobby things I guess I'd say my daughter saw me making stickers last night and wants to make stickers with me today so this afternoon I need to do that and I think I was gonna make like a little logo for myself but um I'm not positive yet but I will be talking to you again soon again if you like me go ahead and hit like and then the subscribe button and you will be seeing more content next week bye